Um, so before we dive into the conversation, just a very quick reintroduction. My name is Yolanda Ma. I'm the lecturer with the JMSC here. And um, on my right side, we have Fen Yuan, who is a women, uh, women rights advocate. And I had to pro properly introduce Fen Yuan's background for those who are not very familiar with her. So um, Fen Yuan is the co-founder of Equality, a Beijing-based NGO. And for decades, Fen Yuan has been supporting women who experience gender-based violence and promoting the legislation of anti-domestic violence law in China. And Fen Yuan has played many roles, including journalist, nonprofit leader, writer, and scholar. So Fen Yuan really brings up very rich insights from your experience in China. So I'm very looking forward to the dialogue here. So Wen Osan has already given us um, a very comprehensive picture about the experience in Japan with a bit of touch of China and the global picture. So Fen Yuan, could you please share with us some reflections first and maybe some observations of the experience from China just to set us with the context. Thank you, thank you, Yolanda. Thank you, our audience, and thank you, uh, uh, Wilson. Um, yes, I would like to show a two Chinese map. Uh, please help me, yeah, to show this. When we talk about China, we uh, understand China is so big, and uh, also the situation is so rich. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the, from these two maps, you can see one is uh, according to a publication by UNDP China office that's a gender development, gender equality index uh, among different Chinese provinces. You can see the darker color is um, indicated the more equal situation. Um, within this province or this autonomous regions. You can see Beijing, Shanghai, Guangdong, and uh, together with Xinjiang and Lemon belong to the more equal, relatively equal places. Some other coast area, uh, usually people uh, believe they are more economic and socially developed, but actually uh, in terms of gender equality, it's not belong to the first uh, group Oh, yeah, so uh, of course this is a map, um, the latest map I can find, but that's still uh, eight years ago. So the data, we can say we need more data uh, and more recent data. Another map is uh, about the um, population uh, from 65 years old, um, not according to the province, you can see. Uh, according to the prefectures or cities. Um, so then you can see a more detailed pictures about the aging societies in China. Also, you can see the uh, red area is mean a uh, higher percentage of uh, population over 65. Um, yeah, I, I think of, of course we know uh, when uh, in the higher age group, women have higher percentage. So uh, the aging societies is also um, a gender issue, a women's rights issue. So um, within, with this background, China is a diverse, diversified situation. So I will highlight some several points about some uh, issues, especially related to um, motherhood, penalty or motherhood punishment, just as Yiro Sans mentioned. I suppose most of our audience read Chinese, so yeah. So then you can see according to some um, researchers, um, public, uh, yeah, publications, we can see uh, if uh, a mother who have, a, uh, a mother who has a child, uh, her natural time, uh, will much less than the fa father. So uh, she will have 1.3 or 1.5 times less than the father. And also um, she, have to, she, uh, she has to reduce working hour for children care. Uh, if she has a child under than four years old, she will reduce her working hour 
more than two thousand hours. If she have, uh, if she has a child under than six years old, she will diagnose about four thousand hours uh, for work. And also, we can see from the um, statics, mothers shared uh, the most of responsibility for child care. For example, uh, mothers shared uh, two, um, yeah, uh, two of uh, yeah, two third, uh, two third of the child care burden, uh, and also each child born leads to a decrease in the, in the wage rate of the mother can be 12 to 17 percent. And also we know now um, China has the um, I'll say, um, birth uh, insurance. That's a policy um, request each employer should contribute on behalf all the employee, both women and men, to contribute to this birth, uh, birth insurance uh, to ensure women uh, can get some, um, how say, payback uh, when she gives the birth. Uh, but we can say only less than one third of the employees can enjoy this policy, and uh, that means. Mm, the uh, women employee or the jobless women, uh, jobless wife of the male employee can in, uh, enjoy this birth uh, insurance. So this policy is good. Um, it can reduce the burden of the employer. But however, still we can say only less than one third employees can enjoy this benefit. Uh, also, uh, I will give you some uh, information about rural women because we know China has huge rural and urban disparity. Um, but however, if you look at the um, willingness uh, to have a child, uh, rural women and the men are very similar to urban. You can see their idea, um, how to say, what? How many child they want? How many children they want? You can say only less than one point seven, and also the gender gap is a very small. Uh, women for women they want one point six child. For men, average uh, in the average they only one point eight, and also rural women who born in two thousand consider. Marriage is a less necessary part of their life. How many percentage? Guess only twenty percent women born after uh, born in two thousand consider marriage is a necessary part of their life. Uh, compared with women born in rural women born in nineteen eighty, that's seventy percent. So we can see the huge the huge difference or the change um, difference between the generations. So I think maybe I can stop uh, stop here mm -hmm. to uh, yeah um, at this moment. And also I would like to ask uh, Willow San, do you have any impression about the rural urban difference among Japanese women or do you have any um, anything to share with us after listen to this kind of yeah information? So may I start to, to talk? Yeah, please go ahead. Ah, okay. okay, yeah. Uh, thank you for your uh, information. It's quite new to me, and especially uh, I was impressed with the number. I mean, the uh, women in the village uh, born in the uh, 2000 answered, you know, uh, to the question if the uh, marriage is necessary in life, uh, only 20% of women 
answered yes. And but you you don't refer to the difference between the uh, urban women and the, and the rural women. And do you think that you know the uh, urban women will answer uh, uh, more uh, to the same question, or is there any difference? Yeah, good question. Actually, um, we lack of data. Uh, so this data just collected from different publications, scholars' uh, publications. Uh, our National Statistics Bureau um, do many, they do many things, but this data related to how say, women, gen especially gender disaggregated data. So now I cannot find data, uh, this data compared with uh, rural women. Um, but however, uh, we can ha have another data. For example, uh, you mentioned um, in Japan, uh, it's only about 1% uh, how say in it's about uh, some percentage of women uh, who don't get married in China now this um, number increased for example uh, in Beijing and Shanghai that's most an urban area in China um, the younger women uh, under 40 years old uh, one of ten women um, more than one of 10 women um, don't get married in her uh, how say, whole life. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, mm. you see, you know, that Japan is such a small country and uh, cities are so densely populated. And uh, so with a very small population in the rural area and also the life in uh, city in the cities and in the villages are so much standardized uh, due to the influence of media. I mean, they all I mean live the same style of living. So in this sense, you know, I don't see much difference between the rural women and the urban women. But at the same time, if you take a look at the average, as you see, as I gave you the data, I mean the. Uh, I mean, more and more women are getting less attracted with getting married. So it's quite similar to your country. But do, do you have any idea why? Do you have any idea why oh. like, there is such why a low percentage of women in uh, marriage? Yeah. yeah. Less, um, think... less interested in marriage. Yes. I think for the younger women now, um, many of them, uh, I think the main reason is they think the marriage uh, as a system uh, is not equal to um, other uh, parties. Um, women are more um, exploited or uh, unequal within the marriage system. Um, I think this is the main reason, including and child bearing, yeah, and also household chores. I think this is the main reason. Yeah, well, I, I totally agree with you. They take a look at the the life of you know the uh, their uh, parents as a as a married couple as an example as a uh, as a role model, and uh, they found it, you know, it it's quite less attractive, especially with women. And uh, we, I mean, according to the uh, research data, uh, we can say that uh, men cannot get married, women don't or wouldn't. That's the major gender difference. So in this sense, you know, marriage is less favorable uh, for women. So it's about the same. Yeah, in, in the past, uh, maybe many women have much less job, job opportunities, so they have to get married to get a, how say, like a kind of uh, insurance for life. But now, uh, women have more and more opportunity, equal opportunities to get education, uh, and also they uh, developed the awareness 
um, of independence. Uh, and also they have more opportunities to get to, in, to in get addition, I mean talking about the male burden uh I mean I understand that the, I mean Chinese men uh have to offer a housing for the bride as their obligation is that correct so this kind of conservative conventional view of marriage uh would lead them uh not to be able to get married is my understanding correct? Uh, yes, I think uh, in the most situations that's true, especially for rural uh, area, because uh, usually that's women married to the family of the husband. So she moved out from her little family. Uh, um, but now the situation is a little bit changed in the city, urban area. Many women, especially the one child, as a one child generation, um, their parents also support their daughter um, as an only child to buy a house. But however, due to the traditional gender norms, um, the husband, the man, don't feel comfortable to move to uh, how to say wife's uh, home, wife's apartment as they are married home. So uh, this maybe can help the business of the property, uh, real estate business, but however, that's also uh, gives the burden for many well, well, young you know, It's extremely the same with the Japanese situation, you know, the uh, as far as the young men, men and women have keeps the very conservative view of marriage that will prevent them from getting married right yeah they have to change yeah, speaking sorry yeah, they have to change the i mean the view of my concept of marriage yeah speaking of marriage um actually there is one question from the earlier round of registration that i found very interesting about um, the question, very straightforward. Can women benefit from marriage at all? Um, and I think given the conversation we're just having, that's kind of an interesting question that I'm curious to hear from you. And a related question to that um, is, has the emergence of a successful woman, which we're talking about modern urban woman here, um, changed the patriarchy structure at all? So just curious to, to throw this question at both, at you, both of you to see if you have any reflections on this. Yeah, maybe uh, you know some, uh, maybe you go first. Well, you go first. <laughs> you know better <laughs> about China. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I think unless reform the marriage as a system uh, completely, women cannot benefit from marriage equally as men. Uh, how to reform that? I think not only stop at the principle of the equal, equality between and women, uh, we should have some other policy to follow up. Uh, for example, uh, we said um, in China especially uh, to abound the practice of the so-called cai li, um, price for the pride. Uh, maybe now some uh, younger women support the idea uh, about the um, price for the bride, said, oh, this is a kind of um, will redistribute, redistribution between men and women and also between the generations. But I think that's only this, uh, how say, the superficial um, observation. But actually, we can say if in a marriage, one party pay a lot of money to get married. This party must have a, a power over another party after get married. That's including uh, say domestic violence and also uh, can say, totally control other party. So I think the marriage equality should start from many uh, policy initiatives. Well, and also, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Maybe one more sentence. Yeah. Uh, and also, mm -hmm. I think the um, equal distribution of the child care and the household chores 
between all family members, especially husband and wives. Yeah, over to you. Thank you, uh, Fen Yuan. Uh, well, as far as the wage gap by gender uh, continues, it's quite difficult to change the gender relationship you know, with the couples. And also, I assume you know, there's a huge generation gap about the view of marriage. And uh, so your parents' generation would force you, uh, would impose you the very conventional view of marriage and of couples, but uh, uh, young people are changing. But the problem is, and uh, women can have uh, negotiation power and uh, controlling power uh, with the uh, their partner, but uh, uh, you know, the, this kind of individual effort is quite limited. I mean, you know, the, you are surrounded with the uh, quite patriarchal circumstances at the workplaces and in society and in your kinship uh, relations. So uh, even though uh, you can negotiate with your own partner and may be able to change him, uh, it's very uh, limited. This is one thing. And also, the other thing that I observed so far, I mean, elite women never want their husband to, I mean, uh, to drop out you know, from the success uh, story. And uh, so this is a kind of weak point of the elite women. And uh, so in many cases, according to the experience, uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, the uh, observations and the field studies, I mean, they found, and researchers found that, you know, the uh, even among the elite couples, like uh, couples between uh, professional uh, career people and also uh, couples uh, between doctors and the couples with lawyers, the, the wives, tend to uh, put the more priority on the career of their husbands. Thank you so much both. Um, that kind of uh, linked to another question since we're kind of talking about the difference between Japan and China. Um, and as we all know, like Japan is more advanced in its societal uh, development and maybe around 15 or 20 years ahead of China, just generally, right? Not talking about as specific economic data. And so there has been a few questions around um, how can the strategies used by the Japanese feminists, I think it, it can be broader, um, especially those advocating for women's rights and welfare. And when also I think you mentioned some of that in terms of both the policy level and at the individual level. How can those be adapted to, to address the challenges we are facing or we will be facing in China in 15, 20 years? Uh, what do you think, both from the systematic level and also at the individual level? Uh, Yolanda, can I say that uh, no, I don't like to talk about the differences in terms of, I mean, the uh, difference in time. And we live in the uh, I mean, contemporary society in the same time in this uh, age of, I mean, the uh, high-tech media. And uh, we share the very similar situation and we uh, share the same information together at the same time. So it's not a matter of, you know, time difference in history. So in this sense, the difference comes from the administrations. We do have this, you know, very much, much conservative, neoliberalist administration. Uh, it may make a difference. Yeah, thank you for making that point. Um, um, so yes, I fully agree. We live in the same time, and even at the individual level, that could be very different case by case. And is there um, so back to that question from the audience? Like, is there anything you think we should be adapting um, or learn from the Japanese experience that you're um, you just shared with us that you think has been pretty successful and can be adapted as a suggestion for for the next generation of Chinese women? That is my turn to answer your question. 
So in terms of the either individual uh, well, level as practice? As I said, yeah, as I said, you know, the uh, in terms of aging, Japan is much more, in this sense, advanced. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, the most advanced society in terms of aging mm -hmm. society. <laughs> so you can learn from it and from my experience. And uh, I'm very much proud of that, that the, we were successful uh, in making, you know, long-term care insurance. It's com national compulsory insurance. So I'm curious to know about, you know, birth insurance in China. How and when did you get it and uh, how it works to help people uh, with child rearing and giving birth? Does it actually effective or not? Yeah. Yeah. Do you wanna... uh, actually, I think the policy uh, about uh, birth insurance, um, actually it's how the development uh, developed from women's um, suggestion uh, that's back ten, back to 1980s women scholars raised this issue because in that in that time um, you know it's, it uh, it was the employers who pay the maternity leave wa uh, wage the whole wage, uh, whole wage to the uh, young mother who takes the uh, maternity leave. So uh, people and uh, women understand that's not equal um, and not fair to the employers. So then to uh, have this policy recommendation. But uh, uh, until many years later, uh, I think about maybe 20 years ago, uh, this uh, gradually become a policy. Uh, a few years ago, uh, this become to a national policy. And also the central government want to combine with this birth insurance with the um, medical insurance of the you know, universal uh, medical insurance. But however, uh, according to the uh, actual practice, and the data just I showed, the uh, practice um, in the reality, it's, uh, how say, developed very slow. So uh, from this data, we can see there must have some uh, obstacles uh, to um, implement uh, implemented this policy. So I think may maybe the first reason is the political will to many uh, decision makers. Uh, but actually, this is uh, can be a much effective uh, remedies to reduce women's burden and also to reduce the uh, employer's burden. So it can be a win-win uh, situation. Is it similar to the child care paid leave in Japan for one year? Uh, usually, uh, this uh, birth insurance only pay for the whole, uh, whole wage of the uh, maternity leave uh, for the um, how say legal regulations. That's usually it's three months or uh, four months in some situations. So uh, uh, sense, you know, yeah. Child care paid leave in Japan for uh, which allowed a uh, new mother uh, to take a leave for at least one year it would be much better than your birth insurance. Yeah, and uh, in China, many employers uh, give ma maternity much longer, but that's not the whole uh, wage. That's a uh, certain percentage of the wage. Uh, well, when I say, yeah, yeah when I say, in Japanese, case, they are paid nearly uh, three fourths of their payment, okay. not full. Oh, but not that bad. Mm. But actually, you, uh, you you say you mean that uh, your government, the state, uh, are concerned about the child care with yes. this insurance. And um, this insurance, I think, mainly to pay the maternity leave, uh, the wage uh, for maternity leave, and mm. also some medical costs 
for uh, deliver baby. Yeah. My major research topic, well, uh, from for years, is focused on the, I mean, who pays the reproductive cost. Uh, reproductive cost means child care and elderly care. Yeah. I think uh, also um, when you mentioned the elderly care, also I would like to share some information uh, um, from gender perspective uh, in China for uh, elder care for pension issue. Um, maybe Xiao Tong, would you please share the uh, another um, PowerPoint about the pension equality start with employment. Employment. Yeah, this is some information uh, from gender perspective. Yeah, you can see uh, now more and more women we can understand um, prefer to have a kind of non-standard employment uh, because that's flexible. Uh, that can uh, take care of um, personal development or family responsibilities and uh, career development. But however, there are some pros and cons of the non-standard employment, or some people like call that uh, informal employment. Uh, um, Besides uh, the um, uh, incomes may be various, and also we can say, uh, we can say from the policy in China, um, the income and the tax, tax difference um, start point is very different. If you are a regular employer, um, you only need to pay uh, income tax as salary tax um, when you receive salary every month, uh, more than 5,000 yuan. So that the tax rate is less than 10%. Uh, percent. However, if you are non standard employment, if you got payment from uh, the contract, uh, your start point is 800 yuan, but the tax rate is um, how say more than 20 percent because it's a how say it's a special term. If you got more, the tax rate can got more. Uh, we, we know more women have to or prefer to have uh, non-standard employment. So we can say this kind of policy is not women friendly. Uh, and another point is uh, from the pension. Uh, in China, we have uh, basically four different pension system. One is the uh, civil servant. Uh, another is uh, state, uh, state loan uh, companies, employers, and also the how say social uh, employees. That means um, some private company or so, uh, extra, uh, some other employment. And also you have a how say a resident of the urban and the rural resident. Uh, in, uh, retirement insurance. Uh, the difference is huge. So uh, besides this, um, the, uh, how much pension you can get compared uh, pre-retirement uh, income. Uh, if you contribute 30 to 40 years, you, you can get um, the pension um, about uh, 40 to 70 percent of your first post retire income. That's only meets the minimum pension re replacement rate stimulate uh, in the uh, international labor organization. That's a labor organization of the United Nations uh, Convention. So uh, that means uh, if you want to get more sun, uh, more pension, you have to pay it from very beginning uh, when you start to work. But we know at the very beginning, you don't have so much extra money to pay this kind of uh, pension insurance. And also in China, the um, more than 50 years practice is with a different uh, retirement age between men and women. Women are 10 
uh, five to ten years earlier uh, retirement age than men. That means you got less chance to uh, imp uh, imp uh, to promote um, in the very senior position, and also you have a less income. Um, because you work for shorter years, and also you have less pension. Uh, so this can uh, depend on poverty in older age. So um, this is what I want uh, yeah, to show to us. I will stop here. Thank you so much for, for mm -hmm. the additional information. Mm -hmm. Well, Sam, do you have any quick reflections on what Fabian mm -hmm. just shared? Yeah. Before yeah, you are extremely right in saying that the employment policy is not women friendly, and uh, and you said you know women prefer non regular em employment, but is it their preference or their I mean the force? And uh, uh, in in Japan we call it irregular employment, so it's quite a similar condition that that you know uh, labor market. Uh, drive women uh, to take the irregular and non-regular employment. This is one thing. And also talking about the gender difference in retirement age, it's a mystery to me. Uh, I mean, I wonder why, you know, that the Japanese, I mean, Chinese women or Chinese feminism, feminist, uh, I mean, demand to abolish this, you know, uh, gender difference in retirement? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, as I know, in late of 1980s, when I was a journalist, I report uh, women who demand to stop this kind of uh, retirement age difference. Uh, but however, uh, after so many years struggles, um, some organization, uh, how say promise they will practice the same age retirement for women with senior um, professional um, how say qualification or women in a senior management uh, positions. Mm -hmm. So, um, but still now, uh, so many uh, Chinese women's uh, rights advocates, including experts of the UN CETO, you, you know, the uh, convention, International Convention uh, of Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, uh, also suggest the Chinese government to stop this uh, system. Uh, so far, uh, we don't see any formal response. But uh, however, uh, many rumors said the government think about um, postpone the retirement age for all men and women. Maybe uh, uh, till that day, women and men will have the same retirement age. Some people said maybe over the 60s. So maybe this kind of um, po um, policy development maybe give some women new challenge. Yeah, as you see, women in the 60s and 70s are much younger than before. They can work. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should add one policy in China, I think we should reform that. It's uh, according to the law, labor law, uh, people over the retirement age uh, should not be recognized as a worker. Uh, so the only as a retired, uh, how say um, people who retired, Retiring. so mm -hmm. they cannot sign the labor contract. So if they work, they can get the payment as a uh, how say uh, to pay a higher how say tax, and mm -hmm. also uh, if they never be employed, they cannot in uh, enjoy the other social uh, insurance because they are not workers. So this policy also should be abolished. Like you mentioned, the women in 50s, 60s, still very young, especially for many rural women. They go out, they leave their rural home, they go to the urban area to work, um, including work as a home domestic helpers or other employees, uh, but they cannot sign the contract as a worker if they're beyond the uh, 50 years old as a manual labor work or mm. 
Yeah. So yeah, at the, it, this policy, it issue, sounds like an exploitation by the urban women of of rural women, and also the exploitation by young women of, uh, with the I mean older women. I mean the. Uh, I wonder if you know that the uh, uh, Chinese women uh, do not want to uh, work for long years and uh, to have a re early retirement uh, so as to take care of their grandchildren. But it's again a kind of exploitation by daughters for the mothers, isn't it? Yeah, so now many young, uh, older women, you know, they refused to those conventional burden. They refused to take care of this third generation. Uh, it's similar like you mentioned in Japan. Yeah, mm -hmm. and That's also true. many younger women don't want their uh, parents to take care of the child uh, because they think they have different uh, ideas to raise the child. Yeah, we actually have a lot of questions around um, caregiving and the divisions within families from the audience. Um, but maybe we should take a very quick five minute break now and then we give us some time to organize the questions from the audience. And for anyone participating online, if you still want to raise your questions, please do drop in the Q&A function on Zoom and we will collect the questions and we're going to discuss that in the next hour. So when also we'll take a five minute break now and we'll continue with the conversation. Okay, we'll be back in five minutes. Okay. Great. Okay. 